you can do what you want to do with your life. If a guy with no legs and only five fingers can do it, you can too. It doesn't matter if it's traveling, RVing, doesn't matter. Going back to school, whatever it is, you can do it. You can find a way. Hey everybody, it's Robin with Creativity RV. This interview was filmed a couple of months ago before we had social distancing protocols. But I have to tell you, it's been on my mind ever since because there's such an important message in this video that everybody can use regardless of their circumstances. Today, I sit down with Neil from No Legs, No Problem TV, who's a triple amputee who lives part-time in a 17-foot trailer solo, and he's figured out how to overcome obstacles in his life and still pursue his dreams. He's going to tell us how he did that and how you can too. So first, we're going to do a really quick tour of his 17-foot trailer so you can see how he lives in his trailer, and then we're going to get into the interview so you can hear from the man himself. Hey, Neil, can we get a tour of your rig? Sure. <laughs> well, come on down the long hallway to the kitchen with dirty dishes. Well, like we all have. And then across from the spacious hallway is, is the dining area. Mm-hmm. And then that's where no magic happens. <laughs> so that's my rig. It's a very small <laughs> rig. It's Taylor Coach, 17 foot. Um, the door is actually in the back. So you turn around and look, the door's right out the back and works well for me because it's really low and I don't have to step up a whole big bunch of steps. What do you pull it with? Uh, I pull it with a 2007 uh, Chevy Silverado Classic with a Vortec V6. And how heavy is the trailer? The trailer is 1,500 pounds dry. Great. So, how is it to hook up and unhook? Uh, for me, it's very easy. Uh, I put an electric uh, jack on the front of it and I have a backup camera on my truck, so I back up, and I'm hooked up. Done. So it's very simple for me. Very cool. What's back here, Neil? What's back here? Here? Yeah. Um, well, there's the back door. This is, uh, this is my closet. This is, has an amazing amount of, uh, of storage space. And then on this side here is the privy. That's the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then I just have fridge and, uh, and more storage. There's no potty. So I have a I have a porta potty in there. So mm -hmm. if I have to have a shower, the porta potty comes out. Gotcha. And, but that's perfect that works. works for you. Works for me. Jiu Jitsu. Yes, I trained uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I am a third degree blue belt, and I am working on getting my purple belt. Um, I train a lot um, because it. It gives me good cardio. Obviously, I can't run, and I never mm -hmm. was a runner even back when I could wiggle my toes. Um, and it keeps me healthy, and it keeps my mind in the right place. So every morning when I get up, I have a sign up here, and it says, Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. And I kind of I kind of live by that motto because I have to. This is Neil. Hi. From No Legs, No Problem on YouTube. Neil. I had heard about before I ever met him through some friends. Was really excited that I got to camp with him. I travel from say October to March mm -hmm. or so mm -hmm. to get away from the cold because I am I'm a grappler and I am retired fire and EMS. So mm -hmm. all of my joints hurt, regardless of the fingers or the legs or whatever else. Mm -hmm. My knees hurt from football in high school and mm -hmm. wrestling, and my shoulders hurt and my elbows hurt and. And in the wintertime, back home, it's no fun. Right. So so I come out to a slightly drier, warmer climate. Right. Um, and also, I, I don't walk very well on snow and ice. Oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> so my first experience getting an RV was after I lost my legs and my fingers, um, I got a pop-up. And I hated it. Just absolutely hated it. Because it was a lot of work. Um, you know, raising it up and down and whatnot. And you're solo and I, on yeah. the road. Yes, I am solo. It's just me. I, when I camp with friends, I try and camp with friends. So I'm I, everything that I do, and it, and it, my truck and my tools and everything is set up so even me with no legs, I can deal with things. Uh, I am 46 years old, and at the age of 37, I got a sore throat, and uh, literally a <clears throat> I need a throat lozenge kind of thing, mm -hmm. and. Um, Two weeks later, um, I was 
in a coma. What had happened was that I had a MRSA infection in my throat and I went to the doctor several times. They kept misdiagnosing my throat and it kept getting worse. And so there I was feeling very sick and I did what any grown man would do. I called my mommy and I said, Mom, I'm going to be off work a few days because I don't feel good. Would you drive and come get me and take me to your house so I can be sick on your couch instead of mine? If I hadn't done that, I would not be here right now because I would have laid down on my couch and died, wow. which is almost almost what happened at mom and dad's. So they, when we got to the ER for the last time, um, somewhere in the ER, um, uh, I died, and they brought me back, and they put me in ICU. I was in a coma for three weeks. And, wow. and so the MRSA went from my throat to my lungs, my lungs to my bloodstream, and I went septic. Mm -hmm. medication that they use to keep me alive, which keep all my blood pressure up mm -hmm. in my core, killed my feet and my fingers. So <clears throat> that was that. That was at the that was in they took my they took my fingers the first week of November of twenty ten mm -hmm. and then the next week um they they took my legs below the knees. Wow. Yeah. That had to have been really hard to go through. That was the toughest thing that I think I will ever go through in my life besides basic fatherhood because I have a son that's 24. And that, you know, the legs and the fingers, that was a one-time thing you get over. You know, having a child, you <laughs> always worry. But once it was over and done with, the pain was gone. I got better. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. And so you grew up and you did sports and, and you went hunting and you did jujitsu and then all of a sudden... You had to relearn how to do everything. I had to relearn how to do everything from going to the bathroom to tying shoes mm -hmm. to brushing my teeth. But see, because I'm my hand, that's what's left of my hand, mm -hmm. um, and I'm left-handed. So I had to I had to relearn to brush my teeth even. So which which was weird. And even still to this day, if I don't pay, you know, I brush my teeth with this hand and just brush 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 with this hand. Mm -hmm. Stick the toothbrush in there and end up moving my you mouth. Hit your eyeball. <laughs> I, I can't. I just I just I move my mouth around. <laughs> because, but uh, um, so I had I had to relearn how to do and especially relearn how to walk on prosthetics, right. which is a whole thing in and of itself. And I've said in the past I'd learn how to be a human again. And then people that don't really get it, they go. But you're always a human. You're just, you can't talk to yourself like this. No, you don't understand. When you're a little lump laying in a bed, sitting in a wheelchair, and you can't walk, you can't do anything for yourself, you can hardly feed yourself, you really don't feel human. Right. So I, I got back to feeling like a human being again. I, I would imagine there are some people that don't make that leap. What made you get up and relearn everything and then decide to even go beyond that and do something like this? kind of an, a stubborn asshole and and I don't give up very easily mm -hmm. and what I heard in the hospital and while they tried to be encouraging about things I kept hearing about all the things I wasn't going to be able to do anymore mm -hmm. and that just lit a fire under mm -hmm. me if, if you tell me you can't mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna find a way mm -hmm. and so I'm, I'm actually the last day that I was in the hospital um, I met the guy who was going to be my prosthetic maker. And so I'm laying in this bed, and you got to imagine that I, I could barely roll over. I, I lost all of my muscle tone because I was, I was in a hospital bed for three months straight. And I lost all my muscle tone. I had atrophied. I could barely roll over. And he asked me about all the things I've done in my life. Well, I, I work on motorcycles. I ride motorcycles, fire an EMS, um, train Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, um, you know, all the things that I've, that I've done, and he said, I'll have you back to doing 98% of the things that you did before. Wonderful. No, not wonderful, because I wasn't worried about the 98%. Suddenly, I was fired up about that last 2%. That 2% I wouldn't be able to do, and so that's what I worked on. And I, I, you know, I made a list of things that I wanted to try and do again, and I tried to go back to fire an EMS and work an ambulance, and I found out that I could not be an effective team member. I couldn't I couldn't go up and down steps and carry a patient anymore and 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 all of that. I couldn't even drive the ambulance very well because the pedals were all too close together. I couldn't do that. I couldn't be a firefighter anymore. But I could be a dispatcher. So I went back to work for a while at the fire station dispatching. Mm -hmm. I peer counsel 
I uh, used to peer counsel a lot more, which is a new, like a new amputee. I would go visit them, say, you know, kind of show them the ropes, give them the pep talk, um, chew on them for a while if they needed to, you know. You know, sometimes they just go, I just, I just can't do this. The hell you can't do this. Get up and walk on your legs. Sometimes you have to do that. People had to do mm -hmm. that for me. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's just, you know, you're, you're just a cheerleader for them when they're doing well. So, right. so I did do peer counseling. Work with kids that are all indifferent, um, training them in self-defense and jujitsu and things like that. I've worked with a great uh, organization called Nub Ability, and they're based out of De Coin, Illinois. So I've worked with them a lot. I got past feeling like I need to prove to everybody that I can do things, and now I'm just back to doing the things that I want to do for me in my life. What's ahead for you? I want to get my black belt in jujitsu. Mm -hmm. I want to um, just travel. I want to build things. I want to enjoy life and mm. what life has to offer. I want to eat lots of good food at lots of different places and right. see lots of cool stuff. And right. When you first told your friends and family that you were going to do this, what feedback did you get? My, my family wasn't worried. And anything that I want to do, they, they go, go, go do it. Nice. Yeah, no worries. So they, so they like me traveling. Matter of fact, you know, back home right now, there's a lot of flooding and there's the bad flu going on back home. And I'm like, Mom, I'm coming home in a couple of weeks. She said, well, I hope all the flooding's gone and because you're feeling good out there. And see, mm -hmm. see, because I have, I have an autoimmune disorder and I've had it my entire life. And I was diagnosed with that at 27. It's called Bichette's disease. So my family does worry about me being at home in the winter sometimes because everybody gets sick, you know. Right. And uh, um, so that's something to consider for me. If what what do I have to watch out for as an amputee that amputee that other people don't? Yeah. Um. I have to be careful of where I park my rig. If you look at the area where I walk, right. it's, all, it's all little bitty rocks. There's not big rocks. Okay. Okay. Um, like walking over to our friend's rig or walking over to where your rig is at. There's big rocks. Big rocks are hard for me to walk on. So mm -hmm. I look for level ground with a little bitty gravel and things like that to make it easier on me to walk. So. I have to make sure that I'm safe in my rig because mm -hmm. at night I take my legs off mm -hmm. um, and it takes me a couple of minutes to put my legs on in the morning. So I have to have, so like this rig that, you know, that I have, it's, it's a straight shot for me to, in the middle of the night, if I have to go to the bathroom, I can mm -hmm. hop right down, crawl right there and because I don't put my legs on in the right. middle, middle of the night. Right. Um, so I have to worry about things like that. I have to make sure that I have power tools available for me. So for instance, if I if I get a flat tire on my truck mm -hmm. and I have to change out to a spare, I keep an, a, 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 a battery powered impact wrench with me because I can't, I, I'm physically unable to break loose mm -hmm. lug nuts with, with a with a lug wrench mm -hmm. um, because because I don't have calf muscles and feet and my balance isn't very good. I mean, I could if I had to. The considerations for, is, for me is making sure that I have an easy way to do things. How did you decide those things? Is it because you had an experience where you didn't have the stuff you needed or were you thinking ahead to make I, sure you had everything before you left? I, I am obsessively compulsive about looking ahead and thinking about things mm -hmm. and planning things out. I am used to the disease that I have, mm -hmm. the autoimmune disorder that I have, and I'm used to my legs. I know if I have an attack coming mm -hmm. on, I let everybody know, guys, I'm not feeling good. I may not come out of the rig for a day or two. Don't worry about me. I'll check in and text with you or whatever, but I may not come out for a day or two because mm -hmm. I feel bad. So if there's somebody out there that has a dream to do something or they have some kind of a disability and they think that they're too limited to do something that they dreamed of doing, what would you advise them to do? Well, if you know your disability and you know your limitations, you know how to work around them in your daily life, so you should be able to figure out a way to work around them if you want to travel like this. Yeah. Here's a very good for instance. I have a friend of mine, Brian Freeman. I train jiu-jitsu with him. He lives in North Carolina. He's in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. He's a disabled vet. He wants to travel like this. As soon as his daughter graduates high school, um, he wants to travel like this. He says, but I don't know how to do it. I said, dude, I said, I know a bunch of people who have buses converted to RVs. Yeah. Get a bus that's got the, 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 lift. the lift on it. And, yeah. and he was like, you just solved my problem. Right. There's always a way. 
I have a truck that I don't need hand controls or anything like that to drive. I drive with my prosthetics, but I found the right truck. Right. I found the right tools to work with my truck. I have an electric jack on the front of my rig, so it lifts it up and down, so I don't have to do the twisty thing and all right. that. Um, I j it's just the little things. I'll, I always make sure that I've got, I've got extra food, and extra food you can just pop the top on and eat if I don't feel good, but right. I have to have some fuel in my body. Right. Things like that, you know. You know, anybody who wants to come out and boondock has to do some planning. Yeah, you you have like that. To, you I, have to plan. When we were talking the other day, mm -hmm. I asked you if there was one thing you wanted to let people know, and you said, I believe, life's not over. Yeah, yeah. If you have a bad thing happen in your life, whether you lose a limb, you lose a family member, get a divorce. I've been through a couple. Um, <laughs> Uh, whatever it is, life is not over. You can get up and you can do things and you can enjoy life. It's all about where you are in your headspace. You can find a way to do something. If you want to do it, find a way. And you can, get, you can get on with your life. You can enjoy life. If you decide life is over because of what's happened to you, then that's all in your head. It's all in your head. Thank you. You're welcome. A lot of people are going to need to hear this. I uh, surprised him because I brought up his book, which he didn't know I was going to bring up. Because Stand up. I heard that it was really, really well written, well done, inspirational. He didn't know I was going to ask him about it. I'm going to pin it at the top of comments below so you can check him out. Thank you, Neil. You're very welcome. All right, you guys. Until we see you again out here on the road, we hope you're all having happy travels. No legs, no problem. Be free. Ha, 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 ha.